everyone, it's me, April Denise, and I'm back to show you how to make an inexpensive headboard. Um, I've been away for a couple of months now, and it's because I've been working. Um, I had the opportunity to travel to Florida and work on a project there with Ludacris, Christopher Bridges. Um, and I was so excited to be there, and I had a ball, and the space came out beautiful. And, of course, he loved it. So, um, I got back just in time because um, I'm volunteering with a shelter, actually with an organization here called Room Service Atlanta, um, and it's an organization that goes around and helps different shelters here um, in Atlanta, Georgia, with redesigning the spaces um, in those shelters for the families that live there. Um, it's for a great cause, um, and I've had a great time, and I've been out all week, every day. Um, and so one of the rooms that I've been working with or working on with another blogger, Lakeitha Duncan, over at Home to Three Duncan Boys, um, I've been working with her, and I've also been working with Nikki McNeil over at Single Bubble Pop. Um, most of the designers there are either bloggers or designers or decorators, and we've all come out to help um, Room Service Atlanta with a great organization. Um, but anyway... The room that I'm working with with Lakeitha, um, they actually need a headboard. So I said, well, you know, we can create one of those really inexpensively. So the headboard that I'm going to show you how to make today is actually going to cost about $10. And we love that number, don't we? Yes. Okay. So you can actually find some of these things to make this headboard um, around the house, seriously. Um, what you actually need, the main ingredients is going to be some plywood, some fabric, and some foam. Now, the fabric that I'm actually using is fabric that Lakeitha Duncan had. Um, it was some leftover fabric with a great pattern on it. Um, and we're going to use this to uh, reupholster to reupholster the headboard. Um, and then you're also going to need some foam. The foam is actually a twin size um, memory foam mattress top that you can buy at any store. I bought this one actually from Target and it was $9.99. Hint the ten dollars, and then of course the plywood. Now the plywood that I'm using is actually some um, leftover plywood or some plywood that actually went to a twin size bed that someone was that someone was tossing out. Um, and I said, hey, can I have that? And they said, yes. So, hint ten dollars free leftover. We are using reusable items that. Um, has been used before, so we're kind of being a little eco-friendly there. We love that, too. Um, and then I just want to share a couple of ideas with you. Um, if you don't have some of these things around the house, maybe some of the things that you can look for. Um, usually when you use the foam, when you're making a headboard or anything that needs padding, you can go out and buy foam at a craft store. But this foam right here is actually a lot cheaper. Um, it only costs 10 bucks, And then the foam that you find in the craft stores can be a little bit more expensive. So, um look for that and then fabric leftover fabric you can also use drapes um, you can use sheets um, you can use um, clothing so just think creatively or think outside the box um, if you go to a thrift store they have plenty of sheets there you can buy them very inexpensively at Walmart and Target um, you can um, borrow some from somebody maybe hey can I have that you're going to use that um, you know borrow means you, you're really not going to get it back <laughs> Uh, okay, so maybe I'm talking about myself. So anyway, um, I'm going to take these items, uh, like I said, that you can find around your house to make this headboard. Um, if you stay with me, I'm actually going to show you the outcome of the headboard in the Nicholas house. So um, just to give you a general idea, the room is a navy blue, um, white, and then we're going to use this pattern as the punch color. So um, all you need is those three items, and once you have those three items, um, you're good to go. If you're a handy person and you always do this type of stuff all the time, another tool that you might need is going to be a staple gun or a glue gun. Um, and I'm actually going to use um, a glue gun today because I left my staple gun in Tennessee. Shame on me. Yeah, I know. So anyway, um, stick around and take a look at this. Actually, look. Okay, so here we go. Um, I actually have the wood and the foam and the fabric, and I have it on a flat surface. Um, you want to take your fabric and apply it first on um, your flat surface and if you have a pattern like I do you want to actually turn it um, away from you so you don't want to be able to see the fabric um, and then you apply your foam once you apply your foam um, you're just going to add the wood directly on top of it like so and essentially once you have everything lined up you're going to start folding over 
like so. And once that's folded over, you're going to take your handy dandy staple gun, which I do not have with me. I'm going to use a glue gun. Um, but if you have a staple gun, use that because it's going to be a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, but you would just hold it over, hold your fabric over the wood like so, and then just punch down in so many different increments um, the length of the board, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to you here in just a minute and show you how this turned out once I finish gluing it all down. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm starting directly in the middle of the board, and as you can see, I've applied a little glue, and I'm just going to take my fabric and fold it over and apply it as tightly as I can to the board. And I'm going to do this all the way down um, the length of the board, and I sort it directly in the middle. Okay, so on the opposite side of the board where I just glued down, I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to pull it as tightly as I can to make sure that it's covering the front part of the board. And then I'm just going to add some more glue here. And I'm going to glue that down as well. That way it's nice and tight, okay? And do this throughout the length of the board, of course. Okay, so I am almost complete, and I just wanted to show you a little trick um, when you get to the edge of your board. Um, if you use a lot of fabric like I did and have a lot of fabric hanging over, um, what you want to do is you're going to essentially have two pieces here. So just cut this piece out, remove it, like so, and then it'll um, give you a little piece like that. And you got to just kind of wrap it like you would if it was a Christmas present. Just pull on it really tightly, and then pull it back, and either staple it down or glue it down. And then it'll look similar to this. So you can kind of see the little cut in there. Um, and that'll help you fold the ends nice and neat. So try that and see if that works for you. Um, it works great for me. And stay tuned. I am getting ready to reveal an upholstered headboard. Alrighty, this is the back portion of the headboard as I have glued everything down. And I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how it looks on the back because I know... Now, um, when I'm watching a tutorial, usually they don't show you what the back look like looks like, and I usually don't have any clue <laughs> if my back looks like their back. So I know you can see my shadow there, but I just kind of wanted you to see the edges. Um, and then they've been completely glued down, so it's not coming up, and it's nice and tight. I'm just gonna flip it up, and voila. Okay, so the headboard is complete. This is the first part of the project, which is the unfinished portion. And as I move over, this is the completed portion. Um, I'm going to show you the edges, like so. Voila. Um, and I have it standing up, so you can see it in a vertical position. Um, and here's how it turned out in the space. 